Okay, one quick thing, fair warning before this video gets started. I just want to say I'm no expert in servers or online connectivity or anything of that nature of how games work. I just, uh, I'm just going off from years of experience of playing online and also, you know, like about an hour and a half worth of just checking out information on how servers are put together and how they work and then giving my thoughts, kind of a quick take on what I would do to fix the situation of just still bad internet in this day and age. What is up? What is good? Wolf is here. In this video, I wanted to go over something that a lot of people talk about. Um, some people know a lot about. Some people kind of just hear things about. Uh, and that is something that, you know, we are in 2020 right now. We're in a, a era of video games where games have been connected to the internet using netcode, using servers, using online subscriptions and all that stuff for over 10 years at this point. So this is a video that I really wanted to make just kind of doing a deep dive into what is netcode, what is online, what, you know, what makes when you go to play a game online, whether it be a fighting game one-on-one -on -one or a shooter where you have 12 people to 50 people or whatever, 100 people in a lobby, um, 100 people being that battle royale, ooh. Uh, which battle royale actually, I... I might actually take a quick look into how battle royales work uh, during this video live because that's the one thing I did not look up. But I spent about an hour and a half checking out, seeing what's what. You know, what is the latest information on netcode and how servers work and everything? Has anything changed since like way back in the day when we used to play COD Four or? MW3 uh, or, you know, I, I used to do a lot of Black Ops 2, Ghost, um, Battlefield 3, Gears of War, played down line, played a, a smidgen of, of Halo and everything. I played a lot of games. Fight Night, um, MKX, I've played a lot of games online. Uh, I've checked out Fortnite, I've played Titanfall, Battlefield 4, you name it. I've pretty much been there and done it online. So... How does it all work? How does everything connect together? How does you hitting a button, how does that translate into an action going through a server online and the reaction, the result of that hitting the other player, taking them down or whatever? Um, so a big thing that I will be saying is button press and result. So the button press on your end and your opponent's end versus the result that you both see on the screen at the same time. So the big first question is, what is netcode? Uh, so that's a big, big, big question. What is netcode? Um, blanket term for anything that somehow relates to networking and online games. Netcode is a term uh, most commonly used by gamers when discussing synchronized issues between clients and servers. Um, basically, netcode is exactly that. It's the whole process of the data going from your gaming console to the game server back to you know each player's uh screens and the data getting transmitted between all of them i mean within like you know seconds um which is crazy to think that any of this works <laughs> it is amazing that online even works uh just to when you, when you factor in you know game consoles or pc um issues that can go and go on with that tech uh technology the uh, connection between you know the the game engine and the way that the net coding is working in the game that talks to the server base and that's you know the the connection that goes on between um the server base your your internet provider and the game and everything and how all that happens within seconds it's just you know everything just flies so quickly it's it's really awesome when you think about how online gaming works as i said potential issues in netcode i think i think the wiki does a really good job at setting this video up actually which was kind of funny because i i, I went to wiki and then there's another one that specifically for fighting games there was somebody that, that made this whole uh blog post i guess you would call it um talking and doing like video uh, video pieces in and everything. Let me bring it up full screen. So I think this is going to be kind of a new thing that I do where I do kind of a full screen of my desktop. Anyways, um, so 
this uh, this person has actually a few really good. You can see, yeah, you can see my arrow on the screen of okay. So bad net code can ruin matches. This this match uh, played online between two Japanese players impacted who gets to attend the, the Capcom Pro Tour finals. That's a lot of money. That's a big uh, professional tournament going on and everything. So uh, where. I guess we could jump into some problems that you can have. So potential causes of netcode issues, latency, which is uh, a big one of ping. Um, and as you know, as I've talked about before, plenty of times uh, in videos and everything, when you have Wi-Fi users, uh, ping becomes an issue. So when you first find the match, it will say a ping of like a 30, maybe a 40. That's good. That's like a, a 35 and under, like maybe a 32 even and under. That's like spot on. That's real good. I mean, that match is going to feel damn near one-to-one -one of what it is offline. Um, but then once you get going up into the 80s and 90s to 100s, anything over 100 is usually just it's frustrating it's infuriating when the game is just it feels like the game is screwing you over which it kind of is but it's not the game's fault though it's usually the person's internet the latency which is latency is basically um it's when you're losing data packs so there is actually a good example so the best example that i found which is really weird that it's on a Call of Duty video because you know I've had a lot of videos in the past where I'm like, Call of Duty has some of the, the worst online that has ever been. But they actually do a pretty good job at showcasing just how um, clients and, and such, like the server clients and everything work. So you have, so this is shooters, you know, the way that shooters work. This is where you have, a a 5v5 situation and each client is the player the server is the main thing that everybody connects to when you see like the server connection to the server interrupted whenever you see that uh popping up in game it means that this main server right here um there is something wrong with the server either there's too much disconnection from all these different clients and the server cannot uh, configure the game to run the right way so then everything just shuts down um, or the server just goes offline, maybe burns out or whatever. A power edge could even happen or something. So you got hundreds of servers per game, um, and they're doing you know thousands, tens, tens of thousands of matches, depending on how popular the game is, of course. But they're they're doing thousands and thousands and thousands of matches all around the world all the time. So everybody connects into the server. Now you see there is. A connection going into the server there's a connection going out now um, this is basically the net code at work on each one of these clients and net code is working on top of these arrows and the net code you know if it's implemented the right way then it's a steady stream of data going from the client to the server on both ends you know you want all the clients working with as much data going to the server processing back to everybody's screens as because the arrow that's going from the server back to you that's what you're seeing on your screen the data from when you push the button is the arrow going to the server of course common sense okay so you want this to go as smoothly as possible now a million things can go wrong, of course, um, which is where we get into. Uh, so you're seeing a bunch of numbers over here and everything, which a lot of this is just like the position of the two players on on the screen. Um, so you'll see that the numbers start moving when the players are moving and everything. And this would be one of these times where it's like a one bar connection. Um, you have massive server ping happening right here. And... I mean, I'm not, I'm not an expert. I want to say that right now. I want to say, I want to say it right now. I am not an expert on this stuff. I literally have just done like an hour and a half worth of, of like research, just checking into stuff. I've heard stuff. I've heard people, uh, developers and such have been in, uh, Twitch chats where developers are talking about and people that, that have done a lot of research and like tested these things. So I've, I've heard like bits and pieces of all the information, um, to have, a decent understanding of all this but it's a lot of like technical math stuff that is i'm not i i can't even get into um it's it's kind of like coder stuff i i would kind of say 
But um, at the same time, it's just like it's dialing in the number as as much as I can figure out. It's, it's dialing in the numbers so that you have the the packets, the, the data, the, pa- the data packets, as you probably heard or years of having those go back and forth as smoothly as possible with, and, and not losing you know anything. Uh, the perfect game, you won't lose any data. There's no such thing as a perfect game. So every game, everything, whether it, even if it feels like it is playing one-to-one offline, you still have a latency ping, which there's still data being being lost in, trans- in translation. Um, so anyways, so when this is happening, every time you see a skip of the character, on the screen, it's data not going through. Um, so what that means is there is a massive amount of data, which I will say you see that a lot with Wi-Fi players. And it's because you lose more data if you're not if you if you don't have like a hard uh, a hard base that the the information is running through. Wi-Fi Wi-Fi is good for connecting to the internet. It's not good for um, continual data back and forth um, because you know you can only get so much data through the airwaves into into your modem into the server so uh, that's why I'm I stress so much of gamers around the world even even if you're a switch user you should definitely try your hardest to plug your consoles in using a using a wired connection um, because then it is a like it is a physical way that the data can can soar through those cables. It just makes everybody's life easier um, if you do that. And I understand that you know there's a lot of times where a hard wire is not possible, but I think we're gotten to the point where the the cables run so long that most everybody should be able to like ninety percent of people in in that are all day you know or everyday gamers that are like the hardcore gamers whatever that compete online every single night if you are playing four times a week online get yourself an ethernet cable you know it's like come on it just makes everybody including your own situation setup it makes it easier so now that you know that you know when when you press the button on your controller on your keyboard on your mouse on your on whatever on whatever your peripheral is um that data gets sent using the netcode gets sent through the the network which is your you know your your modem your router your the the game server and comes back and gets you know into to your console your computer whatever and gets shown on to the screen all right so you've heard there's multiple different types of netcodes um so there's two basic uh, labelings of netcodes and there's two very different functions of way way netcodes work so one of them being a delay based netcode the other being a rollback based netcode um, and you hear this a lot in fighting games I've I've been hearing people kind of uh, bringing the subject up and in in ways complaining but really they're you know they just want to see the games do really well um, and I've heard that like rollback is the best way. I totally agree on that. Um, delay base is is what actually triggers all of the uh, stuttering on the screen. So let's get into delay base real quick here. So uh, my notes that I have over here: delaying when the result of an action shows up on both players' screen, which causes teleporting when connections go bad, as in lack of data packs being received f- uh, from the server to tell the, the the game engine where players are on screen. Uh, that's the basics of it, right there. Is you know, it, it just delays it. It delays the action. Of what's happening on your screen so then you see the teleport happen so all of a sudden so you're here and then in the game that was the last position that the game got data from and then all of a sudden like a you know half second happens and then it gets another piece of data to showing that the character is actually over here so then instead of a smooth animation going it just boom it just teleports you over so that's when you start seeing a lot of stuttering uh, we've seen it for years in Call of Duty that was a major one you see it in fighting games a lot too, especially older older fighting games. You'll see um, if you're playing Street Fighter, uh, you will absolutely know. Um... All right. I'm- 
let me see here, you'll absolutely know the stutter effect. So you see on the bottom right there, the PC player kind of starts stuttering a little bit. You'll see it on PS4 also when you play against PC players. And there has been patches, I know, Street Fighter and Call of Duty, like two, two of the games series that have had some of the worst netcode uh, or, or implementations of netcode. Uh, the netcode might run fine. It's just the way it's implemented. The values of how much data is going in and out uh, are not set right. So then it makes the game stutter and, you know, and act really weird on your screen because, you know, that's what the netcode does. It, you know, uses the data of both players to make the image appear on screen and do what the image is supposed to do uh, to show you the animation of it. So, um... So let's go, let's go back into, so as you can see here, when, when the player, AKA the client on this example, let me actually go full screen with this. So when the player hits a button, then boom, the signal goes down. Now, if there is any latency, then the rollback predicts, so there's, there's an AI that predicts what the next animation is going to actually look like. Um, and then it pushes that uh, animation. It tells the game to start moving, you know, the character on the screen a certain way or do a certain action, uh, depend on what action you just did. Um, that goes to the server first, though. So then it the server pretty much multiplies the uh, the the showing of the animation. So. It ha so you hit the button on your screen, the AI says, okay, well then the next piece of animation that's going to happen will happen, you know, in the next second. Uh, and that information. So I think, um, if you are going to, if you're running forward with, with your character, uh, let's, so let's use Call of Duty as an example. So you're, you're running forward with the character and then all of a sudden, you see somebody come out in front of you and if they, so your game is going to run pretty much just fine because your game is running on your system. So if their, if their connection loses some, some data in there and the server cannot tell, you know, your game console that the person on the screen that you're facing off against pulled the trigger or moved left to right or went forward or backwards or threw a grenade or, you know, whatever the action is, um, the rollback, the AI program in the rollback netcode will actually just say, okay, he's just going to run forward. Um, if there was a button press in there, when the server gets that, uh, when, when the server knows that there was a button press from the other player, then the server duplicates that, rolls a few frames back, and then makes it happen on both screens. So technically, here's the weirdest part of, of multiplayer online gaming. Technically, you are never playing the game live. You're always playing in like a split second, like a half second um, before. So everything that happens in the multiplayer game environment is actually always kind of like a, a split second to a half second to maybe even a full second before when when it's actually happening in the game world, which is really crazy to think that that's how online gaming works, that it even works or happens at all, because nothing is truly live. There is never, ever a game, online game moment that is one-to-one -one live happening right then and there. There is always like... Uh, 12, I think it's a 12 to like 20 to 30 second um, uh, milliseconds or something like that delay. So there's this, there's like a half, like I said, it's about a half second um, of a delay of like what's actually happening in the game world when you see it, when you're hitting buttons and everything else. Um, so you kind of, you got to realize we are, us online gamers are pretty crazy in that aspect of we can predict the future, man. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's, uh, in, in a nutshell, that's what, um, rollback does. 
Uh, it's actually pretty cool that I didn't even realize until I just started doing a lot more of this research that shooters actually use a lot of rollback netcode. I actually just heard that Power Rangers uh, Legacy Wars uses rollback netcode. Rollback is starting to become a lot more popular um, just because it runs smoother. Uh, so when you're playing the game, you don't feel the stutter as much with rollback netcode. But the person with the worst connection, they start feeling it more, which... I find if I, if my equipment is set up to have a better connection, why should I be brought down by somebody who probably doesn't care to have a better connection or, or that's just, you know, like why should I be held back by somebody else's kind of faulty connection? It's just, you know, that's, that's my, my opinion on it. I, you know, if, if somebody refuses to use a hardwired connection, I'm using hardwired and I have a better latency more data pushing through than the person that is on Wi-Fi just because they refuse to I should not be penalized for that and I don't think anybody out there should be penalized for that um, so rollback is a very good answer to that or somebody who's literally just trying to uh, cheat their way to a victory by using bad connections on their part to screw over their online opponents it happens all the time. I mean, we we see that happening all the time. So that's uh, that's kind of delay base versus the rollback thing. Oh, and even even this right here, which was uh, this is kind of a funny one. So even Overwatch, a, a game I've I've played Overwatch a bit. I thought it ran pretty good. Check this out. And those two favor the shooter and its exceptions, as well as uh, responsiveness and their exceptions kind of intertwine. So we'll talk in a bit of detail about the specifics of how we actually solve those problems. We'll kick it off with responsiveness. So um, responsiveness is pretty straightforward. Basically, the client has a pretty good amount of the simulation built in. So when you hit W, we know exactly how you're going to move. We can start you moving forward while we send that input to the server. It's going to take some time for the server to get that input and process it. That half second, so of course, as I said, you are never actually playing the game live one to one. There's always that half second delay of everybody that's that's in the game world. But an overwhelming majority of the time, the server is going to simulate pretty much the same result that you simulated. Um, it's going to then send that result back up to you, and if you're correct, which again you are most of the time in your predictions, there won't be any change. You won't notice it. If um, which is just literally just saying that um, it is simulating it to make it look like on your screen that it is happening live right there one to one. It's not actually. It's just a trick of you know trick of the illusion of what's happening um, on your screen and what the way it feels is absolutely one to one. Um, unless there's lag and you're you're stumbling all over the place and you're teleporting and everything. That's you know that's the game server screwing up. But that's it also breaking the illusion that you are playing the game live. There's a misprediction. For example, you thought you moved forward, but some McCree threw a flashbang and stunned you. The client will receive that authoritative update from the server and snap you back or, or, or interpolate you really quickly back to the position that the server acknowledged was the right spot where you should have gotten stunned. Which is the rollback netcode, um, which is actually really crazy that like I said, that shooting games use that, and we've actually seen that in shooting games for years and didn't even know what it was. <laughs> so does your gaming setup affect how your netcode works? Um, so like frame rate and stuff like that. Um, so I've heard a thing about active frames and how that higher active frames um, can use 60 ticks per second. Uh, a competitive mode to 30 ticks per second for games like Battlefield 4 and uh, a lower tick rate usually reduces the precision of the simulation. Um, so those ticks per second also run off from active frames. So if you have uh, so a game that runs 30 FPS versus a game that runs 60 FPS, if you have twice the amount of frames, you have a lot more active frames for the game to to pick in between like your button press on that split second when you're hitting the button press. So it makes the reaction of the netcode run smoother if you have more active frames in there, which makes sense, you know, because you have more um, frames, you have more spots in all the frames for those, for the button press and the results to actually link together. Um, so it's, once again, kind of like a puzzle, like I always like to say of everything, everything works like a puzzle in the world. 
So in the past, uh, I will bring this one little thing up too. So in the past, we have actually had, uh, in especially like Call of Duty, I remember you used to have the the host in the server. So you you jump into the lobby, and then you have the host, which uh, the host was always the one that had it was supposed to anyways be the one that had the best server ping, which was you know the least amount of of data loss. Uh, I think they've pretty much done away with that and it's gone over to delay base. So now you have a lot more. Uh, I think when we got into this, like to, to basically the current gen that we're in now, uh, I'm pretty sure they, they switched, most companies switched over their games over to a delay base, which was a lot more, um, or a net code that ran a delay base. So your your game itself ran smoother and everybody else just kind of jumped around when when they had data loss um i'm pretty sure we got away from um host server i could be very wrong on that and then you have peer-to-peer um -peer, uh, or the one-to-one -one, which i don't know if people are actually calling it uh so like a fighting game where it is one one to one and you have you know your two characters on on screen happening like this. Uh, so I don't know if Code Mystics is gonna be making some kind of uh, like net code that combines input and rollback. It looks like it in this video, um, but I, I just wanted to show this little example of, of as I was saying, like a one-to-one, -one, um, you know, I, I guess it's called a peer-to-peer, -peer, uh, where there is no server. This is literally just net code running um, one, you know, both players' inputs shooting back and forth it hits the the game engine and the game engine pretty much copies and pastes the, the animations that are running as quickly as it possibly can so then both players uh animations and results you know button presses and results are on the screen at the same time and so that's where you start to get stuttering and and stuff like that in fighting games is that the, the packet loss starts happening and the net code cannot determine exactly where each character is on the screen at the same time and what animations just happened when you know the result of each animation happening and the button presses and everything so i guess the, the the next best thing to talk about to end this video out is the whole thing of how can we fix this to make it better and the biggest one that i i can think of in my brain is for next gen consoles so the ps5 the next xbox console all of its the next gen main consoles that everybody usually plays online i'm not i'm i'm not talking about the switch but if they come out with another version of the switch they could also th nintendo could also think about this but so sony microsoft nintendo I will say this, it would be a very, very big consideration to help out the whole of online gaming infrastructure to not have the next consoles, no Wi-Fi uh, built into the console. Sure, you can sell a USB Wi-Fi adapter to, you know, sell it for maybe like 50 bucks extra uh, after the fact or something. Um, but definitely, and people will will probably find cheaper ones on Amazon, and such that are like third party ones, and you know you'll still have some people. But to cut down on so much data loss that we see, Wi-Fi. So that is what Altimore's mod is out. trying to correct for. In this clip here, I'm going to show you what the mod is doing to try and correct. So this mod right here is basically a frame rate stabilizer to um, stabilize frame rate on street fire five between the cross play and this is a whole other thing too like cross play where where computers are running up to 120 frames per second and consoles are just barely sometimes creeping up to like 45 to 60 uh if you're lucky uh there is a big difference in between active frames so you get a lot more stuttering and i've seen that in multiple games um sometimes uh, i would say i'd say about half the time Half the time, cross-platform play works really good. Uh, but if somebody has a frame rate through the roof, you feel it. And you feel it hardcore in, in, in your online gaming environment because there's not as many active frames. So you get a lot more stuttering on the screen because the data is not there for both players. It's not the same data that's going through. 
um, which is a reason why a lot of fighting game players like to play. Like Street Fighter Five, I have found a lot of matches people go for the training stage. Um, they there's this whole thing about the training stage doesn't have any animation drawing in the background or anything. Like like you'll see, you'll see kind of the 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 little people in the background stuff fighting. That's frames of of information that goes to keep the game in sync. Now, uh, what he just did right there, clicking that button, um, it's it's to simulate a Wi-Fi connection, and you'll start to see that with the packet loss that happens, the data that's lost off from that Wi-Fi connection, because the latency kind of spikes, it makes the game wig out because there's just not you know a good amount of data going going in there. Now, the funniest part about this whole thing is people think that they they might actually do better off from this. And maybe you will in some situations, but on the second and third round, there's a good chance that the uh, the upper hand that you hold in the first round will get switched on you, and you will actually be at a disadvantage because it re- it reconfigures it because the person with the better connection in that second round, which if you were running on Wi-Fi, there's a good chance you won't be that person. The person with the better connection will actually have the upper hand in the favor in their because they have more data to support their character and their screen running the right way, and then it just becomes a mess on your part. So that's why I'm saying it's like, you know, there's so many people. Like I, I can't even count how many people you run into. You are lucky if you run into a actual wired connection on Mortal Kombat 11 right now. Um, this has been an issue since kind of the game got very. Well, it got very popular, and then people kind of griped about the gameplay. So then there were some people that, you know, it fell off. Christmas time, the popularity, you know, it, it went on sale, majorly on sale going into Christmas time. The population soared once again, and we got a lot more Wi-Fi warriors, as I like to call them. Um, I, I, do, I do poke fun at people using Wi-Fi in fighting games and such, just because it's like, come on, plug, plug your system in um, and this is the reason why, like I said, if it wasn't such a big deal, I would not make a big deal out of it. I, I don't care if people use Wi-Fi, if it if if it just means for them going online to download updates, to watch movies or music or to play games like co-op or whatever. But if you are actually trying to compete online, Wi-Fi should be disabled in competitive games. Maybe that's the workaround uh, around to this, or. Um, as I was actually suggested in a Twitch chat, make an option in the next gen consoles of you only get matched up against wired uh, opponents. That would be another huge one that Sony and Microsoft could do and Switch for their consoles. Now, Switch is a whole, a whole different situation because you have to buy a separate adapter to go into the docking bay to actually run the Switch online. So Wi-Fi on Switch, I understand that's a hassle. Um, you have to get just the right uh, the dongle, as they call them, um, adapter. You have to get just the right one to work with the Switch, or the Switch does not like to run all that well. Anyways, for the Xbox, for the PlayStation, um, basically, I would say for the next generation of consoles, give us an option at the least to not match up against Wi-Fi users. Um pool the Wi-Fi users and the wired users in their own separate location. I know that would split player bases and everything. But in the long run, I think um, it might help get people over to the wired side of things so then we don't have so much packet loss. Uh, just, Just on that fact of, you know, the games run way smoother if you have more data. So... And I know that's just probably going to be some people who are going like, well, I can't afford a, a cord and or maybe they find some other, you know, stuff on the Internet saying, well, this this uh, test right here shows that uh, Wi-Fi does not drop packets. I can attest for playing online for almost 10 years that Wi-Fi definitely has an effect on connection and that you lose data way more frequently. Uh, matchmaking and being in the middle of the match is two very different things. Matchmaking will work, no problem with Wi-Fi, but when you have to have a continuous stream of data pushing from from your console to the server back to your console, it doesn't work. It does not work as as well. Um, That has been tested and tested and proven to be true time and time again. 
Um, so yeah, either take the, you know, the, the kind of extreme measure, t- you know, drop the next gen consoles with no Wi-Fi adapter or in the operating system, give us a option to not go against Wi-Fi and only wired users or, you know, whatever like that. So, um, yeah, I think that's going to wrap it up for this one. This is my, uh, this is my little let's talk video on net code and, you know, potential problems, how to, how to fix the potential problems in next gen when we are going into once again, another era of consoles, um, that is going to be always online that we're going to be playing a lot of multiplayer competitive multiplayer online and everything. Um, as I said, Wi-Fi is all right for co-op. Uh, it's just the competitive games, which there is so many more on the market now um, that I feel like, you know, sometimes people buy consoles and computers and stuff just to play games competitively online, uh, whether it be a fighting game, a shooting game, a racing game, whatever. Uh, people, you know, people like to compete online and it's just, it's a bad situation on on, on everybody's part if you are losing a lot of data so uh, with that being said thanks for tuning in thanks for stopping by you can find me on social media at warwolf uh i did just rebrand the music channel to tone wolf and uh yeah you can check that all out around the uh the youtube channel and everything uh at warwolf again twitter and instagram post a bunch of stuff on there also and i will have more videos including a very special little crash bandicoot video coming up very soon so until then i will see you next time